All right, Internet, I need your help with this next one. I'm not 100% familiar. I did not have time to look into it, but it appears that Poem Studios is pulling their apron project after receiving a letter from Lucasfilm instructing them to do so. They've tried a few things. They don't say what in here. Exhausted their options. Knew the day was a possibility. I'm sorry. May the force be with you. We'll read the letter. Dear Mr. Trotter, I am writing on behalf of Lucasfilm. We have discovered Poem Studios' apron game and reviewed the related website, social media, public statements, intent to develop a reboot of Lucasfilm, Knights of the Old Republic. Notwithstanding Poem Studios' affection and enthusiasm for the Star Wars franchise in the original Knights of the Old Republic game, we must object to any unlicensed use of Lucasfilm intellectual property. Poem Studios' current use of Lucasfilm IP on its website and social media pages is without our authorization and is infringing. Poem Studios must take immediate steps to remove all uses of Lucas's intellectual property, including but not limited to Star Wars copyrights, trademarks, characters, artwork, images, logos, and desist from any further use. Lucasfilm is the exclusive owner and intellectual property of all Star Wars major motion pictures, games, and any other Star Wars content. As such, Poem's continued use of Lucasfilm is misleading the public, creative confusion, etc. They're setting up the trademark claim. Uh, they have till October 15th to remove all Lucasfilm intellectual property, cease development on Apron, and destroy all code and materials related to the project and not use any Lucasfilm intellectual property in the development of any future video games. So that is the end of the Apron game, which I'm guessing was a attempt to capture the look and feel of Knights of the Old Republic again but when we do these stories we get a lot of pushback from people saying but 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 are you telling me that no fan anywhere can ever go make any fiction about their thing they're a fan of no that is not the case as usual there is a giant spectrum instead of a bright line. The bright line would be an answer of no. You can't go create any fan fiction that you feel like. You can only create fan fiction that would be a fair use. And so you can't step on the original creation. You can't usurp the market. Basics remakes of Knights of the Old Republic would be stepping on the market. It would not be transformative. Time spent recreating something, remastering it, is not automatically transformative. They might make the characters a higher resolution, but that's going to be a really hard argument for me as a copyright attorney to make in court in front of a judge. The judge is going to be looking at a picture of things that look identical, or as identical as, as, as really can be. And then he's going to, he or she is going to be trying to decide whether or not that's transformative and whether it usurps the market. But, 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 it could be a fair use because it's not commercial. That argument is a complete misunderstanding of how the four factors are balanced. No one factor is dispositive of the other four, other three. So, just because you have a fair use on one thing, or just because it's not commercial, which actually doesn't necessarily win that factor because the commerciality is of the original work, but just because the, the, the types of work and the non-commerciality of, of Apron doesn't mean that that overcomes the usurpation factor of four or the non-transformative factor one or the we're using the whole work three. So I'm very, 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 very sorry. But no, the answer technically is no. You can't just go create fan fiction for anything ever, whatever. So you could answer that question, yes, but the answer is not correct. The answer is technically correct, the best kind of correct, but it is also not practically correct because there are tons 
and tons, probably a majority of copyright owners out there who wouldn't have a problem with you creating fan fiction and don't pursue. But if you don't know if you have permission from them, you are taking a huge chance if you don't reach out to them and get some kind of permission, which can be as simple as going to their website and reading their streaming policy, for example, if you wanted to stream a certain video game. We've done that before for Square Enix games and things like that. Can you, can you stream, what was it, where they had a very specific streaming policy. You were allowed to stream up to the certain day of the story, and then you were only allowed to stream, like, the boss battles or something. Yep. And it was Persona 5. Persona 5. And that's totally legit. That, that I, We don't like that. I get that that makes copyright complicated, and that means you have to do this for every single thing. But yes, if you're going to invest your time and money and effort into a remake of Knights of the Old Republic, it would be a good idea to get permission. Remember who we're talking about here? This is Disney, guys. This is Disney. Lucasfilm is Disney. So are you really surprised that they took down a fan game? We expect this from companies like Disney and Nintendo. Yeah. Who enforce their copyrights with no exceptions. They take everybody down. This is what we expect. There are people out there who will let you make fan games. And Lucas was probably one of them before it was bought by Disney. Unfortunately... It's Disney. Our current the, our current copyright system is almost completely uh, was almost completely established because of Disney's lobbying. Disney has in the past been known to lobby Congress to extend the Copyright Act, and so I have a mug that sort of snarkily crosses out the old copyright years and 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 writes in the new ones. Oh, yeah, I guess we're we're due for another copyright lobbying, huh? A copyright law what? Up. Another copyright lobbying session. From Lo- yes, Board copyright States. lobby. Yeah, yeah. There should be something happening here because in 2023, I believe some things of theirs come off of copyright, which means they're going to be fighting for them to be extended, which I think would be bad for them. I think that that would hurt even Disney, but they don't. American companies seem to be very short sighted, in my humble opinion. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's very true. I think they are very short sighted. I think they're going to have a difficult time getting extended this round. I think people are a lot more aware of it than they were last time around. And the internet is a much bigger factor than it was last time around. So I think they're going to find it more difficult to get another extension. I hope so. Uh, but you never know. I mean, if the political climate shifts in the right direction yeah. during that time, who knows? Well, I mean, um, in terms of... Um, NAFTA being redrawn, one of the big sticking points for the U.S. was that Canada had to accept U.S.-style copyright laws in order for there to be a free trade agreement. And so the U.S. is putting immense pressure on Canada to expand its copyright um, protections in the same way. So it's not just the U.S. that is being affected by this. It's people that the U.S. trades with. Yeah, I mean, the harmonization is is philosophically a pretty good idea because otherwise you wind up in this very weird situation where things are copyrighted in one place and not in another, which inhibits trade because it's like, well, if the book is, is not copyrighted in your turf but is in mine and I can't import it because it's copyright violation, that's odd. So it's, it's simpler to have it unified. But yeah, Absolutely. unifying it under the current system is is a problem. And also, I want to go back to what you were saying about fair use, because, yeah, there, there are a lot of people who want copyright to work by magic words. And you used, you saw this back in the day on Facebook where people would would put things on Facebook saying in so many words, you know, this is not uh, authorized for republication and I reserve rights. And they, they, they phrase it in these really complicated ways because they believed that they used just the right magic words. It would work and it's like n- no it just doesn't work that way these these factors are more complicated there, there's no per se non-commercial use that would make it automatically okay it's like it's not you can't just say no no 
infringement intended as so many youtube videos do and be like oh that makes it okay this is not how this works yeah that's it's not how that works at that. all this video is posted under fair use and does not uh, infringe on no copyright uh, infringement yeah. intent that has zero weight in court Right. It means nothing. It, in fact, could I be the devil's advocate for a moment if I was an opposing party and you were trying to claim 512F mis or you were trying to claim that you were innocent under a 512F misrepresentation standard, which is a knowing misrepresentation standard, my questioning would go something along the lines of, isn't it true that you posted a you know, a thing that said no fair use, you know, or no, no copyright infringement intended. Yes. Isn't it true that you posted a thing that said this video is posted under fair use? Yes. So isn't it true that you knew about fair use? Yes. So isn't it true that if you knew about fair use and you posted about fair use, that you got this fair use inquiry wrong in a knowing fashion. I mean, you don't ask that last question, but wouldn't it oh, be yeah. true then that 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 I've now shown better evidence that you identified a fair use or not and that you considered it? If you considered it and got it wrong, yes, that does come into it, but it is a subjective knowing, not an objective knowing. So we have to go dive, we have to dive deep into what you were thinking. And so I am going to use that as 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 evidence that you were thinking about fair use and you should have got the fair use inquiry right, but you didn't, but you didn't, you chose not to, to observe the, the rules of fair use. So I mean, it's even it's even worse than that. You can make a viable argument that it shows willful infringement, willful blindness. Yeah. And so it's like, oh, OK, and that's, now that's trouble damages. That's, I'm like, this is great. Well, yeah, that's part of the standard for, for 512F misrepresentation. I have not heard whether you get treble damages for a willful misrepresentation. Um, no, I'm thinking about the willful infringement in the first place by posting it. I posted it with saying, well, this is fair yes, use. Yes, that so would be willful infringement and that so, would yeah, be I'm treble like, yeah. damages. So they would take yeah. whatever the judge decided was statutory or actual damages and then potentially times them by three. Yeah. So the, the magic words are, are killing you, basically. <laughs> They're making your life worse. All right, everyone. And that is our show. Let's see if we can get some dogs in here for a little bit of uh, a send off here. Thank you very much for joining us. I am Leonard French, your favorite copyright attorney. And of course, with us today was Kurt Mueller, your favorite patent attorney. Thank you very much for being here. And thank you to our special guest in the studio here, Kaylee. It looks like there's a dog here waiting to say hi. And another dog. This is a community-supported channel. Thank you very much for supporting us on Patreon.com slash LJ French. Big thank you to the following October supporters at the $50 level. Jonathan Doe, John Steele, Gavin Barnard, Evie, Andy, Kyle Mudrock, Veriman Kane, Sean McNamara, William Gonzalez, Michael Pierce, Frankel Tia Marie, Terry Chris, Richard Fournier, Michael Jones, Spirit Bear, and Jan the Great. Thank you very much for your support. And thank you to the $5 plus supporters who are scrolling on the LED panel behind me. And I will follow find room for you on the crawl at the end of the thing. I also plan on producing something about the Washington State Supreme Court that recently overturned their death penalty. Please continue to speak in your stories. Please continue to donate money in support of our efforts, and we will continue to deliver, I believe, where we did following videos this week for you, which is pretty cool. And please continue to sub to our channel. We are sitting at 99,814 subscribers. And we would very, very, very much like to cross over into the 100,000 subscriber range there. So thank you again for joining me. I am Leonard French, your favorite copyright attorney. Have a great Sunday and a great week. Love you all. Bye.